Sabbath morning, rise and shine, hit the block, make it hot, shake him down. We go at it till about four, five o'clock. Warfare, got my gear, I'm prepared for the op. And we talk it, how we walk it, yeah, that's just how we rock. Friday night, gotta rest in the morning, hit the block, shake him down. We go at it till about four, five o'clock. Warfare, got my gear, I'm prepared for the op. And we talk it, how we walk it, yeah, that's just how we rock. about women and men just being unapologetically them just having a good ass time hyping up your friends doing you not giving a damn about what nobody gotta say about it i was gonna say a fuck but not giving a damn about what nobody gotta say you definitely have to be a person that can be like the life of the party and you know just a bad bitch yes if you are cuffed up you can still have a hot girl summer but you still gotta be on your bullshit okay To drive the boat, you have to throw your head back, open your mouth, and let me pour the shot in. Yeah, be ready to drive the boat next time I see you. Yeah, be ready. Hey, we are Israel United in Christ of Columbia, South Carolina, and we out here going over the topic of Hot Girl Summer, right here at Benedict College with our people. And so the sister right here, we are with... Uh, TT. We're with TT. So TT, you had mentioned over here that that the hot girl summer has lost its whole meaning and everything. So explain that to us. I mean, it had a different meaning than me from the beginning. I thought it was on something like going out here and living a lavish life, doing what you do, basically on some other type of stuff. But now they're trying to twist it around like, oh, you know, we goody good girls now, basically, you know. That's just my view on it. So when you say goody good girls, like what do you mean? Oh, we in the books now, you know, that I guess they practicing celibacy and we thotting and, you know, all that stuff. That's what I say. That's what I say. All right, I'm Officer Carl with IUIC Columbia, South Carolina, and we over here with Sister Shay. Sister Shay. Now, Sister Shay, we stopped you, man. We had a question. What do you think about Hot Girl Summer? I mean, it was cool while it lasted, but it's just time to get it back in the books and just let it go. So, what? Let me ask you, if you don't mind me asking you, in your opinion, what you think Hot Girl Summer represented? Um, it's supposed to be you just being free, being into yourself, just being confident, but it's going too far. What you mean going too far? Like, <laughs> everybody getting caught up and pregnant and it's just too much going on. So they got people getting caught up, getting pregnant and stuff like that from the hot girl summer? This is people that you know or whatever the case may be? <laughs> yes. So you have friends that participated in hot girl summer? Yes. We are here at Benedict College talking to the brothers on campus, you know what I mean, and some of the sisters as well. Just trying to find out what they what they feel about the the little movement with uh, the hot girl summer that this Megan the Stallion chick done brought up. So so my question to you, so bro, what's your name? First of all, my, my bad. Marquise. Marquise. So I'm here with Marquise, and bro, what's your name? Jordan. What is it? Jordan. So I'm here with Jordan. So got Marquise and Jordan. So what do y'all think about the hot girl summer movement that was that was brought out for this summer or whatnot? They just having fun. Mm. Say they just having fun. Okay, what you what you say what? Enjoying they said they 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 young. Okay. Okay, what you think, Jordan? I mean, I just I don't know. I mean, they doing the same thing we doing now, huh? And I'm over here with. Maya Schofield. Maya Schofield. So, sis, today we're doing a, a interviews asking our people about Hot Girl Summer. What can you tell us about Hot Girl Summer? Well, according to Megan Thee Stallion, she pretty much says that Hot Girl Summer is pretty much like bringing yourself, um, feeling good in your skin. I somewhat agree with it. Um, I feel like it's good just to give girls confidence and um, just to boost their confidence, pretty much. So, basically, is you take it as more along the lines of uh, self Self uh, improvement and stuff like that, and accepting who you are and things of that sort. We over here with my brother Justin. Justin, brother Justin. So I got a question for you, bro. What's this thing with this hot girl summer, man? Uh, I think it's just for girls to um, like go all out, be um, be them full selves, I guess. You say be them for what? Their full selves, like let them let themselves have fun. Damn, girl, you need to slow down with that. <clears throat> You ain't my daddy, and you ain't paying daddy by bills. Mind your business. Oh, this my song. See, and that's that's why we keep hearing. Also, so with the hot girl summer, 
they say it's to build confidence and stuff like that and to be comfortable in your own skin, whatever the case may be. But what is it really looking like? Uh, mostly that. I've seen a lot of that where girls just want to have fun and be out, be able to show themselves without having to be like the whole, you know, oh, I'm like, I can't show my skin. Now, do you know who started the Hot Girl Summer Joint? Megan, Megan the Stallion, right? Megan Stallion. Yeah, Megan. Megan Stallion. Now, would you take Megan Stallion's lifestyle and actually say it's compared to the, or lines up with the goody goody where they're in the books and they're not being thotty? I honestly, from what I see, because I'm not really into this type of music, into the type of artists, what I see, nah. Okay. So you say no. You say no. So would you think what she's doing for the women of our community is a good thing or a bad thing? F. Now she's trying to make it good, but it's not about now. It's about how it started. I'm still stuck on the way it began. That the way Has it started. Has it started. Right. It was. It was. Me, I took it as in, you know, I don't want to say the word. The, say the word. So I want some whole shit. Okay. And from the beginning, that was the hot girl stuff, man. Now they trying to twist it into, oh, we not on no whole shit. No, y'all was on some whole shit, and y'all still on some whole shit. And that's just how I feel about it. Hot girl swim, I'm not in that. I'm a scholar. Would you say that the way it's personified, is that what's being represented, or is it a deeper meaning behind it? It's supposed to be a deeper meaning about it. It's like it's supposed to be positive, but everybody's not making it positive. So what they really doing with it? Too much. <laughs> uh, would you say they use it as an example just to just go out and do? Just to what? Just to be a hoe. Exactly. I, I was going. I didn't want to say it, but it's like when you see it, hot girl summer. Like who it was that started it? Meg. Megan the Stallion, right? And even her personification of how she uh, uh, carry herself. Would you think that would be a positive outlook for our younger women? Um, I mean, yeah, when you look deeper into her, because she's actually in school, she's actually really smart. She just, into herself, she's just real confident. So I got a question. So Megan Thee Stallion, right, she's already established. She got money, she got a career, whatever the case may be. Like you said, she's in school. But let's say the younger sisters like yourself coming up, trying to get yourself established, whatever the case may be. If you carried yourself like Megan Thee Stallion, do you think you would make it far in the, in the job career uh, field? Certain aspects of her, yeah, and certain, like, Certain aspects of her, yeah, but like, as in, like, her appearance, how she dressed, no. Like, why y'all asking about it, though? Well, we asking about it. This is the reason why we asking about it because a lot of a lot of people have taken this movement to be something positive for our women, but a lot of people don't understand. And I and I'm gonna ask y'all this question because I want to know y'all because either one y'all got children. No. Okay, so y'all don't got kids yet. When you have a kid and it's a daughter, would you want her to participate in this movement? I mean. Like it's kind of like a social media thing. You can't shield your daughter's or your child's eyes from everything. So like, what they see and what they get, how you raise them, how how like how they came up in your household, is gonna show like what they know and what they're gonna go for. Okay. And what did you say? What you got? Would you want your daughter to follow this movement? I mean, but the, the girls that's doing it, they already grown, so. If they ain't in my house, it is what it is. Mm. So, so I got a question for y'all brothers then, man. I got a question. So if y'all daughter, regardless, you know, she might be 18, in college, freshman in college or whatnot, 17, 18 years old. And it's going to be called something different when y'all are... When y'all decide to have families of your own, right? It's gonna be. It ain't gonna be called hot girl summer. It's gonna be called something totally different. It's gonna be a repeat. This ain't the first time this happened. I was in college before. Now it it was it was. It was I'm gonna tell you what it was called. Horn. That's what it was. That, that's exactly what it was when I was in college. I'm telling you. Hey, I'm telling you. I I was at HBCU with y'all. So so if it was if it's your daughter at 18 years old, would you want her to participate in? The way that, like you said, I gotta come to you, like my man's over here, Jordan said. The way that the sisters walk by, you said that the men have fun. Yeah. Y'all talk to the women, yeah. you know, y'all yelling at them, hey, shorty, hey, this, hey, that, yeah. and you try to help something. Well, what about the sister? And she looking like, shoot, I'm trying to help son too. But what if that's your daughter? Would you agree with that? I mean, like I said, how you raise your daughter is how she gonna come out. I mean, how she, she ain't, if she ain't, if you raise her not to be a hoe or raise her around some strong, some intelligent women where she not having to do that, mm -hmm. and she not going to come out like that. So I wouldn't have to worry about it. 
So when you look at the videos trending with Hot Girl Summer and the photos, what the case may be, is that what it's portraying? Not really, but I mean, it's also giving girls the boost to feel good in their skin. So you also see the girls that Matt we read in the crop tops, but they're also bigger in size, a little bit thicker in the hips. So pretty much, uh, for what I've seen, yeah. But then some girls do abuse the um, hot girl summer term. So it depends. I don't see both sides. So the reason why I ask that is because some fact is, okay, with the hot girl summer, right? Um, a lot of our sisters have situations where they deal with men or whatever the case may be, and then the guy end up dogging them out, and the system, you know what I'm saying, and they find bad men. Do you think that Hot Girl Summer will attract good men or attract dogs? I think good men. I think so when the female shows that she has confidence and she's not taking no, no BS or just, you know, um, so pretty much the girls just show she has confidence. And I think it should attract men that will treat the girl right, show them the way a woman should be treated. So it should attract good men. So with that being said, well, girls need to be able to feel confident in their skin, be able to feel confident with what they, the way they made and whatever case may be ready to be really big or really small. Do you think it should take hot girl summer to make that happen? Not really, but it's not a lot of things that push young girls these days. So, I mean, whatever can. I mean, I, it's, I guess it's just a uh, celebrity's way to help girls. But, I mean, it shouldn't really be that way. It should be a lot of people, but with different ways. But at this moment, this is the only way, so. So, I got to say, I want to say two things. One is that, um, so let me ask you a question. If I was trying to present drug, no drug use, right? And I came up to you smoking a blunt, and I say, hey, bro, smoking weed is bad. You know what I'm saying? Don't be worrying about none of that stuff. Say no to drugs. How would that look? It'd look hypocritical. Hypocritical, right? So if you have someone like Megan Thee Stallion, who in every concert she has, she twerking half naked and saying that I'm teaching women to be confident in themselves, not having to be able to be uh, self-conscious about how you feel, and uh, send out a positive message, quote unquote, to the younger women, wouldn't that be hypocritical? I was. I, uh, well, I don't want to stump you, but this, I'm, I'm asking because, in general, like, let me ask you a question. You don't have any children, right? So if you had a daughter, would you want her to be like Megan Thee Stallion? Oh, no. Oh, hell no! But why not? Well, I mean, I was raised around uh, Christians. I mean, I was raised in the church. So, like, I don't, like, my mindset, I just, like, I don't want my daughters wearing, like, short skirts or anything like that. Good deal. So do you believe in the Bible at all? Yeah, I do. Good deal. So, so I'm going to read a script for you, if that's all right, that, that actually lets us know exactly what, what our sisters should be doing because that, that, that the stallion chick or whatever her name is, she sees literally what we what the Bible is explaining is that that goes against what we as a people are supposed to do. So let me get that thing. Let me get the Timothys, man. You can come on this side right here, bro. Let me get the Timothys. Let me get the Timothys. Mm -hmm. So let's get that thing. So we're gonna read about exactly how we're supposed to carry ourselves, how our sisters are supposed to carry themselves, and that movement has destroyed that. It's actually helping push a further agenda on our people to destroy us even more. Your agenda out of the millions that they have on us. You are 100. <laughs> Read that. First Timothy chapter 2, verse 9. In like manner also that women adorn themselves in modest apparel. Now, the way that the women are dressing in this movement, is it modest at all? Mm, nah. Mm. Modest meaning as in covering yourself and having the respect and knowing your worth of yourself, you know? It's a difference when you're showing a little skin, but showing everything, you know? Yeah. Mm. Now, of course, the word modest means that you cover yourself up to not attract sexual attention. Are the sisters that's in this movement participating in it, are they attracting sexual attention? Yeah, most definitely. Okay, so we're going to finish that script out. Read. With shamefacedness and sobriety, not with broided hair or gold or pearls or costly array. So it says with shamefacedness. For a woman to be shy, because that's what shame faces mean, is it shy when you can expose yourself and show your curves and be out in every I'm man's face? Oh, that's been, in a way, confident, but in another way, being too confident, too, you know, because okay. you got to have respect for yourself. Uh, that's how I see it. Me okay. Personally. Now, you're a student here. Yeah. You're a student here. Now, do you, 
do you know anyone personally that's participating in it? And y'all know I don't. Okay. 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 <laughs> Good deal. So is that it on that? Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. So now with the braided hair and things that it was also talking about in the scripture too, it says to not let those things be what you're about. It's nothing wrong with getting your hair braided. It's nothing wrong with wearing jewelry. But it's a problem when you make that about who you are. And that's what you are showing everyone. This is who I represent. You understand that? So according to the Bible, according to God, would this movement be good for our people at all? Would this, would this, this movement of Hot Girl Summer be according to what God wants us to do? Nah, it would be. Now, with most of the women doing it, because I heard this question earlier, and I like that joint. Would our women want their daughters... Or the men too want their daughters to participate in that. I have a daughter, and no, mm -hmm. she would not participate in the hot girls. Not under my roof. Now, when she get, you know, where she could do for herself, mm -hmm. that's a different thing. You know, that was the same for me when I was under my mom's. I had to live by her rules and do whatever. When I got on my own, I could do what I want to do. So that's the same as for my daughter. A lot of girls are taking it and turning it, like you said, an opportunity to become. Um, presenting it as like a horse fashion or whatever case may be. So they can go in the club and do what they want to do, do it with whoever they want to do it with, and they can't be criticized or ridiculed for it. But let me ask you a question. Do you have any kids? No. If you had a daughter, would you let her be in Hot Girl Summer? No. Why not? Because that's just not what I want her doing. Because it's, it's a bad look, right? No, that's just, I would want her focus all the time. In school all the time. And that's nothing wrong. That's actually a good aspect for you to push on your daughter to be more focused on school and not so much worried about the trends and stuff like that that's going on. So with the Hot Girl Summer, what happens if um, your daughter was, you had a daughter, right? And she was in school and she did, you know, she was about her career, whatever case it be, but she dressed and carried herself like Megan Thee Stallion. Would that be okay? So we know how Megan Thee Stallion carry herself now. She go on stage. It ain't, a, it ain't a, a performance that go by where Megan Thee Stallion ain't doing anything. Oh, you got the lyrics to that? Let's see what the lyrics say. So it says, you want to read that? Read that for me, sis. That last one right here. Handle me. Who going to handle me? Thinking he a player. He's a member of the team. He putting out that where he got to be the MVP. So what do you think that, that presents to our younger women? Handle me. Ha let, me see, oh, let me see that thing again. I got to see. I gotta see what it say. Okay, it say, handle me, uh, who gonna handle me? You know what I'm saying? What, what, is, that, what is that talking about? She's basically saying nobody can't really handle her. She's in her own lane, and you gotta be a certain type of criteria to deal with her. All right, all right. Think he's a player, he's a member of the team. So for there to be a team, meaning what? She got a couple. Like, he think he, like, he think he running game, but she really running game. So it's so she yeah like you saying so she got a team when you think you number one you really might be number six mm -hmm. and then she said he putting in all that work he want to be the MVP boy bye I mean that, that's what it say I know I sound horrible sis but that's what it says so what you think that's talking about basically like he trying to be her number one but that's not what she want so with all that just them just that lyric them bars right there straight bars all right them bars we just heard right there. Is that something you want to be known for, or is that something you would like for not only the, yourself, or if you had a daughter, also the woman that you surround yourself around? Would you like their mindset to be just like that? Um, no. But with me, like a couple people try to get my attention, but I'm focused on school right now, so I'm not really worried about it. So I feel, kind of feel the same way. All praises, all praises. But I think that, like you said, let me show you. Do you you believe in the Bible? You mind if I show you a couple of scriptures? All right, so let me get that in Deuteronomy. So I want to show you because what you said is the truth. They taking Hot Girl Summer and they turning this into a lot of them is turning, like you saying, it was doing too much. They turning it into a reason to basically be whores. They getting caught up, pregnant, and things like that. But the Bible actually tells us how we should carry ourselves as men and women in order to avoid this. All right, give me that. Deuteronomy chapter 23, verse 17. Uh -huh. There shall be no whore of the daughters of Israel. Uh -huh nor a sodomite of the sons of Israel. Thou shalt not, thou shalt not bring the hire of a whore nor, or the price of a dog into the house of the Lord thy God for any vow. For even both these are an abomination unto the Lord thy God. So 
we shouldn't let our women carry themselves like whores because in reality that degrades not only the women it also degrades us as a nation because when they look at our women they look at who's the people that's supposed to be leading them you agree i do so it's like when our sisters is dressed like that what that happens is like you said a bunch of get pregnant guess what happens single parent households then the children underneath you, you got men not having you have boys not having men around so they're being raised by women and they have any feminist spirits and stuff like that then you have the sisters who were living hot girl summer and they raise other women other daughters to come up the same way which in reality what it ends up doing is polluting our people as a whole you agree i do but then i don't you must have been raised in a single parent household i was i was too okay i understand that so so if y'all don't mind i'm gonna read the script before we let y'all go if it's all right with y'all that's cool with y'all all right man let me get that deuteronomy man i actually want the deuteronomy 23 and uh 17 i believe that's what it is and you could sit right here with the fam but you're gonna be right there that's all good got it deuteronomy chapter 23 verse 17 mm. there shall be no whore of the daughters of israel mm. nor a sodomite of the sons of israel so that said that there should be no whores of our daughters that's what the bible said a lot of people don't know that that's written there because a lot of people actually say ah it's okay because the definition of a whore is a is a person that has slept with more than one person. Now, of course, a lot of us didn't know this. A lot of us even fell into this. But how do we fix that in our communities? Let me get uh, Timothy's. Let me get Timothy's. You got it? Yes, sir. 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 9. In like manner also that women adorn themselves in modest apparel. To dress in modest apparel is to not attract sexual attention from the other sex. So a woman that's dressing in tight skin clothes or belly out, cleavage showing and stuff like that to attract men the bible says she's not supposed to do that read on yeah what you got so it could be the thickest woman in the world walking on this camp check this out though check it out nice shape, now i'm talking about nice shape and all yeah. she could have baggy clothes on you wouldn't even could tell her shape uh -huh. but you said that she shouldn't have anything that attract her sexually what if my sexual attraction is a smile she got the beautiful smile in the world. She not supposed to smile? Oh, no, she's supposed to smile. I'm going to show you. Read that thing again. I'm going to show you what it said. It's not about the smile. Read. First Timothy chapter 2, verse 9. In like manner also that women adorn themselves in modest apparel. So it said apparel, clothing. So a woman can have a beautiful face, and if that's what you're attracted to, she's just going to have a beautiful face or a smile. See what I'm saying? Read on. With shamefacedness. But this says a woman is to be shy. Shamefacedness means shy, meaning not in all men's face. You see some sisters on campus, they in brother's face yelling, hollering, you acting, acting, acting out more than men are on college campus. I know y'all see it. I know y'all see it. That says they're not supposed to act like that. Read. With shamefacedness and sorority, not with broided hair or gold or pearls or costly array. So she, it's not what that scripture is saying. There's nothing wrong with them wearing nice clothes. It's just don't let that be what what you represent. The way you dress and the gold that you may wear, jewelry and stuff, is not saying you can't wear it. It's saying just don't let that be all you about. Your inside should be worth more than what people see. That's all that's saying. So y'all understand that? Yeah, I, I like to hear comments. I don't like that. Cause okay. That's, that, that's basically saying telling people what they can and can't do. For what, though? When I when it's like uh, Megan Thee Stallion and her videos and herself in general, you know, she's pretty uh, provocative in the way she dresses and dances or whatever case may be. So, do you believe in the Bible? Yes. Do you mind if I give you a scripture real quick? Sure. All right, let me get that. Uh, Modest apparel. So, the reason why I'm bringing this out is because that's why I asked you the question, do you think it'll attract uh, good men or dogs? Because if you're in a club, right? And you getting your hot girl summer on, you feeling yourself, whatever case may be, and you you dance and you dress how you dress. When men see you in the club, what is the first thing you think they think about? She's a hoe. She's a slut. You know what I'm saying? And and not only that, but they only they do they think, oh, that's a good girl. I might want to marry. You know what I'm saying? Have kids with her, or that's somebody that I want to smash. Yeah, most likely the one that I want to smash. So bringing that up, you know, we deal with these different things that plague our communities with our people because we are all about the uplifting and the restoring of our people. So let me show you something real quick. First Timothy chapter 2 verse 9. Uh -huh. In like manner also that women adorn themselves in modest apparel. So it's not, it's not a mystery. It's not a secret. 
when it comes to the blacks, Hispanics, and Native American women, we have the best looking women in the world. It doesn't take for them to have to dress have naked to be happy in their skin or to present themselves, you know, as uh, beautiful women. So read that part again. In like manner also that women adorn themselves in modest apparel. So it says adorn yourself in modest apparel. So do you know what modest apparel is? Yeah, like apparel that's regular apparel, it's casual apparel, um, apparel that clothes that cover your body. Exactly. So it's like modest apparel is something that don't accentuate your curves, don't, uh, don't attract sexual attention. Because, like you said, whenever you go in a club and you dress how you dress and you join your hot girl summer and you're getting it on, whatever case may be, men is not looking like that's a good sister I can see raising my kids. They looking like that's a good sister that I can see tonight, later on, yeah. after the club let out. You know what I'm saying? Read. With shamefacedness and sobriety, uh -huh. not with broided hair or gold or pearls or costly array. So knowing that the Most High God said that our women, the so-called Black Hispanic Native Americans, is... He's the author of beauty who created them, meaning that they're the most beautiful women out there. He said, you don't need costly array and braided hair with goals all in it, dress half cry, you know, cut off whatever case may be to attract men. He said, you should dress yourself in modest apparel, not with these things, so that you can really get a righteous man yeah. that's guided by this and be able to take care of you and provide for you. Do you agree with that? I agree. So let me ask you a question. With that being said, do you think Hot Girl Summer is positive influence on our younger women or a negative influence on our younger women? I guess not since you just gave the scripture. I guess it's negative. But I mean, at the end of the day, the way, because the Megan Thee Stallion did come up with Hot Girl Summer and she did get the definition, she was more so looking at it in a positive way. But if we if we look at it in a way that girls use it now or use the term Hot Girl Summer, it's more so in a derogative way. Let me show my body, let me show my curves. But also, and there is some females that will put on a crop top and be like, I could wear this, even though I do have a little bit of stomach. So, but to answer your question, it's a derogative way as, as form to the Bible. So one more question, and I'm going to let you go, because I know you say you was late. Yeah. So if you have a daughter, mm -hmm. would you like for her to be the next Megan Thee Stallion? No. Why not? You said, you know, she's making she people confident. Yeah, but I don't want that lifestyle for my daughter. I wouldn't want that lifestyle for her. And what kind of lifestyle is that? The rap lifestyle, being in the game and the hip hop world, because it it would eat you and chew you out, depending on. And, and it's not so big for females, but it is it is getting there. But I still wouldn't want her to be in that lifestyle. Okay, so what about the way uh, the twerking and stuff like that? You wouldn't mind your daughter doing that? Um, no. What's wrong with that? You know, it's hot girl summer. You enjoying yourself? You yeah, know? I mean, but a hot girl summer summer is not meant for everyone. Yeah, it's not meant for everyone, and everybody can't do it. See, and the thing is, that's what we're trying to bring the awareness to. It's like I know for a fact, uh, it, before I came into the understanding of who I am, keeping the truth, those things was attractive to me. But yeah. now coming into the truth. I'm like, I don't want my daughter to be like that. Mm -hmm. So guys can be looking at her in that fashion, dressed that way, whatever case may be. I want her to be like what we read, dressed in modest apparel so that she can have a righteous man come over that's going to take care of her and not look at her for lust. Right. So you believe in the Bible, right? You say you was raised around Christians. So I want to show you, if I can, two scriptures. I want to show you what you said, and I also want to show you what God says about his people, about his men and his women, how he don't want them to be. All right, so let me get that with modest apparel. Because what you said is true. The, the way you feel is not nothing wrong with it, and it's not a weird thing because that's the way that women should cover themselves and dress that way. You don't want your daughter being like Megan Thee Stallion, right? No, I really don't. And saying hot girl summer while twerking and a whole bunch of men watching them? No, no, no. Most definitely not. Exactly. Now watch this. First Timothy chapter 2, verse 9. Uh -huh. In like manner also, that women adorn themselves in modest apparel, with shamefacedness and sobriety, not with broided hair or gold or pearls or costly array. So pretty much we know that scripture is telling us that the women should dress themselves modestly, which means not attracting sexual attention. Whenever Megan Thee Stallion and all the sisters that's following behind the trend, the way they dress, that's what they attract, sexual attention. It's saying you don't need those different things to make you seem confident in yourself. You don't need broader hair, meaning your hair live by the way you look to represent you rather than having confidence within yourself to represent you. 
Because when you do that, like me and you both know, that's why you won't let your daughter do it. I wouldn't let my daughter do it. It's because we know when brothers see that, they don't think, you know, that's a good, wholesome sister right there. I really want to marry her, have kids, take care of her, and do it right. They thinking, she fine as hell, and I want to smash. That's what they think, right? But the thing is, by them doing that, give me um, no, uh, no uh, whores or the daughter. So the reason when they do that, they be able to feel, because also with that movement, is girls to be able to feel like I can be comfortable with my skin, but also I can do the things that I like to do and not feel uh, scrutinized about it because this is my time to shine, whatever the case may be. So what they do, if they want to be with men, they'll lay with men, and that'll be what it is because the, the, the statement is, well, why can the men do it and we can't? You know what I'm saying? Now I'm gonna give you this one, and I, I can. I know you got your Burger King, whatever case may be, man. You probably ready to go tear that up, so we ain't gonna take too much of your time. Go ahead. Deuteronomy chapter 23, verse 17. Uh -huh. There shall be no whore of the daughters of Israel. Because whenever they take, uh, like you said, some of the girls take this as feel confident in yourself, build yourself up. But there's a lot of the women that's putting a stink on this thing by using it as an opportunity to be flamboyant about. Uh, being um, out there dressing modestly and going out to a club and be able to twerk to the end of the night, whatever they want to do, and be who they want to be. They also uh, talk about um, getting you basically a sugar daddy. If you got to do, go do a do. I got to do that got money. Go get that money and get back to, you know what I'm saying? All about that. But it said there shall be no what? There shall be no whore of the daughters of Israel. Because that's what that produces. That produces whoredom because that causes brothers to lust after sisters. More sisters will be getting laid down with, not being taken care of, and would just get, end up getting pregnant, left with kids to raise on their own. And guess what? They daughters going to grow up, hot girl summer too. they just going to have another name on it, put another twist on it. You agree? Uh, yes, I do. Now, you as a mother, you know what I mean? What should you be teaching your daughter? Because she sees this. How old is your daughter? She's one. She's one. So when she grows up, this movement is just going to have another name. When she grow up, it's going to be something totally different. So as mothers, because I'm a father, so you're a mother and I'm a father, we have to teach our daughters according to God so that they don't fall into that thing. Okay? So we're going to read another script. You got it, Titus? One thing. One thing. Last one. Last one. We good. Last one. And this is just something that you take with you. Yeah. So when you go home and you look at your door, you're like, hey, I got, I got, I got some things to do. I got some work to do. All right. All praises. Good deal. You got it? Titus 2. Mm -hmm. Titus chapter 2, verse 3. The aged woman likewise, that they be, be in behavior as becometh holiness, not false accusers, not given to much wine, teachers of good things. So you're an aged woman to your daughter. You're supposed to teach her good things. The good things is according to God's laws, not according to the society where they they letting women run rapid and people glorify that thing. God does not approve of that. Is that it? Read on. Verse four, that they may teach the young woman to be sober, to love their husbands, to love their children. Now, wouldn't you want that to be your daughter instead of what we see? Yes, most definitely. Good deal. Good deal. Because, of course, in my household, I was raised by a single parent. Your household raised a single parent. You're not participating in Hot Girl Summer, but you have friends that you know. That's what, hold on, hold on. So you supposed to say Hot Girl Summer? <laughs> not fully, but a little bit, a little bit. All right, I'm going to help you out. Hopefully, you, it's just the lip gloss, y'all. She just participated with the lip gloss, <laughs> making sure they, they shine in and, and popping, all right? But since we going to uh, show you also, give me Timothy's. Brian to show you how our sisters should carry themselves. Because the truth is, when you look at the blacks, Hispanics, and the Native American women, which may, uh, the men and women make up the 12 tribes of Israel, we have, even according to the Bible, we have the most beautiful women in, in the whole earth. With that being said, hot girl summer is not what our women need to be beautiful or to feel beautiful about themselves, because in reality, your beauty is already in you. Right, watch this. First Timothy chapter two, verse nine. In like manner also that women adorn themselves in modest apparel with, with shamefacedness and sobriety, not with broided hair or gold or pearls or costly array. So when it says our women should dress themselves in modest apparel, what do you think that means? Basically just like don't sell too much skin. Exactly, because when it means to dress in modest apparel, it's not to dress in a way that can cause sexual attraction. All right? So it's like, don't, it's nothing wrong with wearing jewelry and braiding your hair and whatever case may be. It's just saying, don't let that be the things that define you. Don't let that be the things that you use to say, hey, this is who I am, all of this nice stuff you see. Like, for instance, I don't think you walked out today and say, 
my lips are going to be the topic of who I am. And shiny, look at this. You know what I'm saying? I don't think that's what you did. So the scripture is telling us, telling our women, don't let that be what defines you. It shouldn't take hot girl summer for you to say, I'm confident in my skin as being a black woman. And I'm confident in myself to say that I'm, I'm happy with the way I'm made, the shape, whatever the case may be. Because the Bible gives you all that you need to be able to walk and feel that way on a daily basis. You know what I'm saying? So it's just like, for instance, for hot girl summer, why they don't, everybody don't go natural? That's hard. I'm natural right now, and it's it's a struggle. See, like like uh, Megan Thee Stallion, is she natural? I don't know. No, I don't think so. She wear a lot of wigs, but she could be natural under her wigs. Yeah, but what? Okay, so behind closed doors, natural, but in person, what does she rock? Uh, she got like different wigs. She got like a different wig every week. Exactly. So is that really being comfortable in your skin? Yeah, that's what she like. Is your hair a part of your skin? Yes. So if your hair is naturally curly, shouldn't you be happy with your naturally curly hair? Yes. Yes, right? So that should be a movement in Hot Girl Summer. Matter of fact, let me show you how important your natural hair is. Give me that in Daniels. Because the truth is, we were created by the author of beauty, right? He created us just like he, cre he created us in his image. And when it says that, it's not talking about everybody. Because everybody looked different. So if everybody was created in God's image, then God looked like a little bit of Chinese, a little bit of white, a little bit of black, a little bit of Indian. No, he said, I created my children in my image. And I'm going to show you who his children is when you read this script. You're going to know exactly who he's talking about. Read that. Daniel chapter 7, verse 6. <laughs> and after this, verse 9. And I beheld, I beheld to the thrones were cast down, and the ancient of days did sit. So since who's the ancient of days? Who are... who? is older than days God. God right so that's what we're talking about right and it said he did sit so in order to sit you got to have a what chair you got to have a chair but what do you have to have to sit in that chair a body a body so God has a body that's something that's a, a perception that we get that God is a spirit he's not a body but say he has a body go ahead whose garment was white as snow uh -huh. and the hair of his head so back to that now we saying God we talking about God right so the hair on God's head, let me see what it look like. Like the pure wool. Sis, who has pure wool hair? Black people. Black people. <laughs> so if you want to be comfortable in your own skin and God created you to have hair just like him, what you think you should wear? Natural hair. Natural hair. See, hot girl, some of them missing some parts. Why can't they wear what they want to wear? Mmm. Get me, I'm, I'm going to show you. Uh, where's the script? Give me Matthews. The one where it says, is it Matthews? Where for a woman, uh, she attracts sexual attention and a man commits adultery. Just looking at it. 5 and 27. That's what I want. Give Matthew 5 and 27. I'm going to show you this is why. Because remember the first script we read is there should be no whore of our daughters, right? That whore sleeping with multiple men. So the men is also doing the same thing. So I'm going to read some. Matthew chapter 5 verse 27. Ye have heard that it was said by the old of time, Thou shalt not commit adultery. But I say unto you, that whosoever looketh on a woman to lust after her, have committed adultery with her already in his heart. So that's why. Because when we look at women to lust after their shape for sex, we're in sin. And, and men and women can help lower that down to where our communities won't be single family households. Because that's what comes from a hot girl movement like that. It'll push women to go sleep with somebody. You're bound to either get sick, she's going to spread it to you, or bound to have a baby, and you're in college. And right now, you're trying to get to where you can take care of a family. See what I'm saying? That, that's just the, it is life, but that happens because we don't apply what we just read as a people. That's all that's saying. You understand? Yeah, we got to live and learn. Like you said, we got to live and learn. But it would be great if we live and learn according to what God said, because then the way our communities are today would not be perceived on the thing today. That's low key slavery, though. Like in a way, cause they, we y'all want us to follow the book. Why? So you say that's low key slavery? Yeah. Hmm. Following it, we following the book. Everybody, you want everybody to do the same thing. So I got a question: In slavery, when they had big bucks. When they had in slavery, whenever we got off the slave ship, because y'all are big, strong dudes. You play sports? You look like you do. You play sports? Okay, so you look like you in shape. What about you, bro? 
Okay. So y'all would be considered the strong men of the community, right? What they would make you do is sleep with multiple women to have little ewes running around strong. Then they will put them same strong babies in that field. So the whoredom that we were taught, the sleeping around with multiple women, we did not do that. We actually do it. We were taught how to do that in slavery. That's slavery. When you with one woman and she's with one man and y'all married and you raise up children together and have a family. That is what everybody hates. That's what nations are afraid of, of you actually raising your son and daughter to not follow the stuff that's advertised on TV. And on YouTube, like we're doing today, like you said with the sister. She's putting that out there in videos and stuff. Yes, she's a college student. Yes. Yes, she is. But at the same time, she's also making a negative impact on other women because those women don't have millions of dollars. They're trying to get just to where they can just provide for their families. And young men are too. But if you have a baby in college, your chances of actually doing so go down. Daniel of Israel United in Christ. Please subscribe to our YouTube channels. Stay up to date with our latest events, music, and classroom lessons. IUIC plans to continue visiting different countries where this gospel has not been preached before. IUIC needs your help in pushing this truth. So join us, subscribe to our Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and podcasts, and stay up to date with us. For more information, please visit www.israelunite.org.